Hello, welcome back to the channel. Nigel here with you, Nigel's Model Bench, and now we're on part 23 of the build of the uh, this is the A20G Havoc from Hong Kong Models. You can see our wood down in there, we can see our lovely cockpit in there. So, um, yeah, and at the moment I'm working on using super glue to fill that gap in there. It's more of a step than a gap. When you build yours, be a little bit careful. Obviously, um, I didn't notice when I put it together, but obviously, when you look along the length of the fuselage. Um, that area there is like is, is, is concave so um, in hindsight I should have packed it out with the floor that's above it I'll remember that when I come to do the J so um, there we go right and if you haven't seen it by the way I've done a review of the A20 J slash K slash Boston 4 um, already uh, kit's not available yet but um, uh, luckily Neil sent me one I think I had the first review on the planet so that was really good right so um Continuing on from this nose, if you remember part 22, I'm sorry, we did a lot of talking and talked about what we're going to do with this nose. I have since done some work on it, and as you can see, I've added in the frames, and um, I, what I've done, I've started to do some assembly. And I have more news coming um, on this in a second. So I've started to assemble things, and what I've done is glued these bulkheads into the actual, into one side. And you can see these these here, this here, this is a track, and the actual um, the actual uh, ammunition is going to run down that track. Okay, so you're going to see behind it, you're going to see bullets. Um, so, and on this side, it's basically going to be it's going to look like that. So, when you look through, when you look through, you'll see the bullets on the other side of the track. They'll be painted brass and everything. Now, I still haven't decided whether I want to have this opened or closed because it's going to be quite difficult. And luckily, I've got these MDC tracks, which are all flexible because they've got to come up from the ammo bins. Um, so they're going to come sort of up from the ammo bins and then twist around and then go down those tracks and then into the guns. They're going to be quite a torturous route. I've got one drawing of this in that book. Um, so we've also got the top ones that are going to come along and they're going to sit sort of, uh, let's do it the other way round, be easy to show you on this one actually. The top one's going to come around and sit like that in there sort of thing. So you're going to see the top one. Now uh, the plan is to have one side closed up and one side open so we can look at one side of the aircraft and you know get the lines and the other side of the aircraft will have all the detail. Now these lower guns down here I really can't decide what to do. I think I'm going to close them up because couple of reasons. One, um, when you put all this together, let's do this side. When you put this all together, you can see down in here, you can see down in there is the gap in the bottom where it goes over that part and everything down in the bottom there. So that would need some work. Probably put a false floor in there or something. Um, but also when you look at the front of the fuselage, you've got the weights here. So that is going to sort of sit on there like that okay and the gun's going to be in there and you're going to see that big weight there so i don't really want to go grinding weight away so i think i'll probably close the bottom ones up i'm not quite sure and that will save me having to use any um breaches or anything down in there because they're sort of sitting on legs and that but um yeah we shall see where we go with that one uh, but as yet as i say i am still as yet undecided and then to make matters even worse i've now had an email from gas patch and they have sent me more stuff to go in here. So I don't know what they've sent me. They said it's more than just this. But um, they've also announced they are currently working on a 3D printed kit of the 323. Um, is it the 323? The little plane, or I can't remember now. Is it 323? The little plane that I reviewed, uh, the little rocket aircraft. Um, but yeah, that one. What, what number was that? Oh, the ME163, the little comet, the little... Um, rocket powered thing or jet powered thing whatever rocket powered wasn't it um they're doing a 170 second scale one of that as well now so you've got the you've got the 132 from meng you've got the 148 from gas patch which is gorgeous and then you've got a 170 second scale so i don't know if it's going to be all 3d printed or just um styrene with 3d printed parts i don't know but as soon as it's available you will see it here maybe not here first but you will see it here so um anyway so they they're sending me more stuff to go in this nose so I am determined now to wait, wait and see what's going on um, and have this nose open because 
I mean, they're the, the gas patch stuff. You've seen these guns. They are absolutely incredible, and I'm determined to try and make them work. And the whole idea here is to get it all assembled, because this, this piece here is going to go on. And then what I want to do is build up the guns and then slide them in from behind. And that guarantees that we've got straight alignment on the guns. I don't want the guns all obviously pointing all over the place. There's also another bulkhead that goes in there. This lower door, which I talked about, I'm not sure if I'm going to have that open or not, because it hinges down here. And I think it's going to sort of ruin the line because you've got the nose wheel coming forward and everything. It's got that lovely sort of stance, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of worried that it's going to ruin it. So I, I, I don't know. We'll have a look at that. So I may, I may not have the bottom door open, but I really do want to have these three open here. So there we go. Um, and just before we leave the nose behind, uh, I've also painted those areas in there black and inside those so that when we put it up inside, you don't see bright grey plastic in there. So that can go away for now um, until the gas patch stuff turns up. Uh, so the gas patch guns can go back in the box. The All the other stuff, the MDC stuff can go away. So that can all go over there. So that that's that. Um, I've been working on these ammo boxes. I just want to show you here. This is a little technique I use. Uh, these, these guns, these ammo boxes here are sort of assembled in two halves. So there's a seam around the middle. You can see the seam there. OK, so I've had Mr. S I've put Mr. Servicer on there in grey and then I've given it a little guide coat in black over the top and just want to show you what I use this for. You can see this one here has been done and you can see there's a black area there. There's a black area there and there's a tiny black area there. So that's showing us the low spots so we can see where we need to apply more filler. But I could just sand this lightly and you can see that we're We've got grey plastic on the outside, we've got grey Mr. Surfacer, and then we've got the black in the middle. And as we sand, you can see we we get it all nice and level. You can see we've still got this sunken area in the middle. So that's another reason to stall, if you like, on the nose, because the Mr. Surfacer will just keep shrinking. So you need to give it some time. Same on the top here. Um, you can see the plastic, you can see the Mr. Surfacer, and now you can see where we've got the the black areas where there's low spots, so we know where to put more Mr. Surfacer, and then we can do the same guide coat again. You've probably seen car car sprayers do this, they, they put a, a black spray on, and it's just so that when you rub it down, you can see any low spots. I'll just show you once again there. It's a really handy technique for um, making sure you're getting all your filling done nicely. So there we go, just like that. Okay, so you can see where we need filler down in there. All right, so there we are. Right, now, what are we going to do? I'm not going to sit your sand and nose in front of you because that's not going to be very interesting for you to watch, is it? So what we're going to do is we're going to move on through the instructions. Now, as you know, uh, we've got the instructions here. So this is where we're sort of leaving it all behind. We've done the engines, so they're all done. We could go on now and do the exhaust, but I don't really want to, to be honest. I can't decide whether to have the, because you've got the option here. We can have the cowl flaps open or the cowl flaps closed. And I can't decide what I'm going to do. Um, so we shall see. I may actually, do you know, I've just thought of something. It wouldn't be a bad idea. Because obviously the exhaust stay where they are when the flaps open. So it wouldn't be a bad idea to fit the closed version. Sort of dry fit all that together, tape it together, clamp it together, whatever. Put your exhaust into the engine. Okay. Against the closed version. Because then you know you have all your pipes in the right place. And then if you want to have the open version, you know that the pipes are in the right place. And the flaps will be away from them. So that's something we'll look at. Maybe we'll look at that in a minute. But I was actually looking at move, I'm going to move on to this now. As you know, uh, Neil very kindly sent me the the wonderful uh, uh, metal set. So this is the uh, 01EA03. I have spoken to Nigel at Hannans and asked him to order this in. But for some reason he hasn't. Um, if you're buying the JK or you're waiting to get it, it comes with this already. You don't need to buy it, so don't worry about it. But the, the aircraft, the model does need, really, it does need metal nose gear at least. But this uh, this set, I've done a review of it, go back and have a look on the channel. But this set includes the gear 
for the nose and the main landing gear as well. So we're going to use them on this. Um, I believe from what other people have said, I believe the main undercarriage is okay in plastic. So you just need the nose gear. And if that's the case, you can get the Aerocraft nose gear. And if you want me to fit that shaft to it, like I've done on mine, then I can. Um, can I show you the, you see there, this is the metal Aerocraft nose gear. What I've done is soldered on a brass rod so that it's strong. And then I've glued the plastic part in there. The, the, uh, the A-frame is a plastic part, the um, the actual main leg is an aircraft brass leg and then that there is a piece of brass rod I've soldered on to go across. So there we are. Um, failing that you can use the metal landing gear from Hong Kong Models and what he's done on that as I've shown before he's actually integrated the um, duper duper duper, he's integrated this part here H26 and the leg so that it's it's stable it doesn't actually swivel so uh yeah bit of a bit of a weak area in, on the genuine kit however <clears throat> it's nice and to scale so you know if you like to see scale in your wheelbase then i would suggest this is perhaps an option or the air or the um, hong kong models metal leg um the other option that aircraft give you is there's a big lug on here so aircraft give you a resin plug that goes through the floor and the leg actually sits in that plug. Now that might be not that might not be what you want because you don't want to see a great big plug up there. But uh, you know, there's a lot of different ways to go about it. But Hong Kong models have come to the rescue with their metal leg set. And this is actually the only place I've ever seen it for sale is BNA Model World over in Australia. This it's like thirteen pounds. It's it's just incredible for what it is. Um, so we can look at doing that, and we can also look at doing our main landing gear base which is going to be main, main building up the um, the engine, the uh, nacelles for the engines. Now, we've got some photo etching here, as you can see, but I also have, Edward have kindly sent me their, their photo etch set. This is um, 32485, so this is going to fit the J as well. Um, and this has got lots of, like we did with the Bombay. Remember we did the Bombay, we did the, we added all those pieces in there. You can see down inside, there's all that lovely hold. Uh, metal work in there and you've got all the vertical members as well with all the holes in them very difficult to see because it's also closed up but uh, it was great fun doing it um, so I'm going to do the same in the wheelbase here uh, so you can see on the instructions what we're doing so we're going to be removing all these horizontal shelves we're going to be adding all these these brass parts and I'll be drilling through again to make the holes and then we're going to add brass shelves rather than have those thick, chunky plastic parts. So it's going to look really nice. The other thing I'm going to do is drill out all these holes down here. As you can see, I've got the plastic parts here. So here are the... Let's get them out of the bag. Actually. Sorry for the noise. I've got the plastic parts here. They're shown as just recessed. But in reality, they're actually holes. They're holed through. So uh, what I do is drill them out and then open them out from behind so they look like thin sheet metal. And as you can see, I've done it in the Bombay here. All these holes are on the bottom here. They were all just um, just moulded on, you know. So what I've done is hollowed them out, thinned them down, and then you can see you've got what looks like sheet metal. So uh, and that really does greatly improve the look of everything if you're looking for that scale effect. So um, so there we are. Um, you can see they're building up all these frameworks around this around this ducting here. You've got more plastic to remove so there's a lot of interesting work going on with these wheel bays so uh, I think you'll enjoy that a lot we've also got parts to go into the gear doors got the hinges and everything and of course the nose gear door is in the uh, cockpit set so uh, um, not the cockpit set it's actually called this one so this is 321012 um, that set is well worth getting. You've got parts in there for the cockpit. You've got parts for the engine. You've got parts for the guns. You've got parts for the turret. And you've got all the parts for the nose gear bay. So there's a lot in there. Um, and it's not just it's not just a cockpit. Uh, and for the belts, I would personally go for fabric belts. But, um, you know, the steel ones I've just used on the, um, on the B-17. I'm quite happy with those, to be honest. The other thing I did mention um, on the subject of the nose, if you're watching my B-17, you'll know that I've actually glued the nose halves to the fuselage rather than um, build the nose up and put it on. The reason I've done this one like this is because 
this is how the instructions laid it out. And if you remember, I said all along, I'm sort of following along with the instructions. I'm not building out the box, but I'm following along with the sequence of the instructions. And then where I break it, I need a good reason, which is where I broke it to do the engines um, because I was waiting for parts for the cockpit. That's right. And then, um, so I did the engines and then when we got the, the pipes for the cockpit, we went on and put the fuselage halves together and that, and then it started on the nose. Um, but basically with fitting the nose on here, it's all going to be good because the bottom's separate. So what we're going to do is fit the top of the nose around here, get a nice seam there. And then once that's all dry, we'll fit the bottom of the nose. We'll fit the bottom of the nose to the fuselage and get a nice fit there. And then if we have to, we can sand the, sand the doors to fit in the sides so it's all looking good right so what should we do now should we look at the exhaust or shall we look at doing the um the um undercarriage let's have a think about that all right so i've got the major parts of the undercarriage this is the uh, left hand main undercarriage so if you are using the kit parts this is what you're going to have um so basically i've got the uh I haven't really bothered on it because obviously I'm not going to be using it. We're going to be looking, looking at the metal one in a minute. But I've done all the seam cleanup and everything that I need to do. And then what we'll do when it's all together as an assembly, give it a cut of grey primer. And if we've got any more seams or whatever to do to deal with them, we can look at them then. So um, we've got the first part here, which is N13. Oh, sorry, let's just, just use this other one first. N3, which is this one here. So you've got a pin on here and a hole in there. So that's going to go onto there. And then here... We have a pin on there and a pin on there. So that's going to glue into there like so. So we'll grab a drop of extra thin and we'll glue that in there like that. Okay. All right, now obviously I'm not going to glue this plastic leg in, the main the main gear, because, or the main leg, because I'm going to be replacing it in a, center, in a second. And then we've got this one here which is going to glue onto either end of this one. So we'll put a drop on there and we'll put a drop on there. And this is actually a very nice fit, this one. It sort of clips into place. So that's going to go into there like so, and that's going to go into there like so. Like that. Okay. And then we've got a diagonal piece, which is going to go into the top is going to sit in there and in a groove in the main leg so it's going to sit in there in that groove in the main leg and then in that little slot in there and that should get everything nicely aligned he says oh come on let's go in there first and then as much as We'll put that end. It doesn't want to go together. Does it? I'm trying to do this without gluing. I just want to show you how it looks with the plastic parts. So, um, obviously, if I wasn't doing a video, I wouldn't bother assembling it with the plastic parts. But uh, I just want you to see it. And hopefully, we can get it in the wing and see how strong it is. I think the thing to do here is to turn the camera off and then it'll just go together in a second. Come on. There we go. I can see I've got a great big seam on there as well, which I haven't got rid of. Let's just get in there and get rid of that as well. So I'm trying to do this with it all just flopping about and it's uh, it appears to be probably a waste of time. Yes, it's a complete waste of time. I'm going to turn the camera off and get it glued in. And I know that as soon as I turn the camera off, it'll go straight on. OK, so I've managed to sort of hold it together with some tapish. What I really would suggest if you're building this is grab the lower wing half. OK. And I felt what to do. We'll just quickly knock this off the sprue because it's a bit cumbersome, isn't it? The great big sprue in the way. Make sure we stay away from our edges so we don't end up destroying anything. There we go. Right. So there we are. Right. So we've got our wing there. Now we can 
take this undercarriage leg and fit it into here so we've got four holes which these legs sit in and just position everything in there like so pull that leg around into there there we are and keep that that tape sort of basically keeping keeping this together but what I, all I want to do here is just try and see if we think the undercarriage would be strong enough just using the plastic parts and to be honest I think it probably will because that is I mean even with it I mean, this I'm just holding that leg in there because obviously it just wants to swing out but that actually feels quite strong um, and you've also got a diagonal brace to go in as well so that's going to add even more strength so yeah I'm thinking it may be good enough but what we've got here is the metal part to replace the plastic okay here now as you can see we've got a lot of cleanup to do and everything which we'll do now but um, you can see that the it's basically a direct replacement of the plastic part but what Neil has done is added this pin he's added this pin to the top here which you would in immediately think just sand that burr off of there you would immediately think well if that's the case if that's like that and this one's got a pin on it so it's going to go up into the wing then surely I need to drill the wing but no the wing is already drilled ready for that to go in so basically what you're going to do here is I'm going to try and assemble this on camera if it doesn't work I'll turn it off but basically this is going to go into here like so go on and that can go up into there like so I'm going to put the tape across that's going to hold that together this pesky piece here has got to go into there like that okay and we can see straight away it's, it's all stayed together a lot better and then when this goes in we've got that big metal pin on the leg going in and then we've got our plastic parts which are just sitting there pretty much along for the ride and that tape is holding everything distorted again but I want to get those legs in there and I'm going to take that tape away from there get that leg over because it's always good to get the leg over isn't it and there we go so and it's obviously a lot stronger because of that direct pin depth but um really really cool really really nice so and as i say we've also got this diagonal to go which is only going to make things stronger and you can see how everything sort of sits on an angle because obviously the dihedral on the wing so um very nice indeed so i would suggest building this up on the wing and use the wing as like a jig um, and that'll make sure you get everything on the correct place so there we are. So I'm going to get this metal leg cleaned up and then we'll get that all glued in with some super glue and we'll go from there. All right, so got the metal leg cleaned up. Um, these little Infini diamond files are absolutely amazing. I got these for premium hobbies uh, and these are ICT0007. Yeah, that's the set. That's the small ones and you got the wider ones as well. They are um, absolutely brilliant for this. You got, you know, nice square edges on them you can get in and and cut some really nice square corners and that rather than uh, having the softer edges of general files and also you've got this end which is they're tapered down they're very very narrow so you can get into areas like that and uh, they really are absolutely the much nuts for uh, for filing they really are very very good um, so yeah and also of course because we've got a metal leg here where the uh, the chrome hydraulic shock absorber sort of part is um, 
we, we've got these old flory polishing sticks and they're brilliant for getting in and polishing so make sure you get all your seam lines off and that and as i say once it's all together we'll give it a um we'll give it a run over with some gray primer and uh just check it for seams and everything it's um looking good right so we can come to glue this together now so i'm going to use my favorite super glue which is the the vms black so what we're going to do is put some into these holes here get that run into there let that run into there i want a nice strong joint here okay we've got that in there and then what's going to happen here is that leg is going to sit on there so it's going to go that way round that is going to sit on there no, it's going to go that way around. And that is going to sit on there. And that is going to go into there. And that is going to go into there. So we can pull those two together. Make sure that leg stays on there. So that's good. And then we can grab one of our little cotton buds. And just remove any excess super glue. And that's the good thing with the black. You can see where it is. You can see where it's sticking out, where the excess is or whatever. Just that tape on there just to hold that together and there we go right so what we can do now is drop this into our wing just like so and make sure everything is going to line up when it comes to fitting us to the Oh, that bloody piece is broken off now. There we go, that's gone in, that's gone in. That front leg's gone in there, that leg's gone in there. Let's just make sure this tape is pulling them together. There we go. And we're having that great big leg on the, or big peg on the leg. Peg on the leg, yeah. Um, that's going to make things a lot better. And then here, I think what I'm going to do is, oh, do, 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 do. I think what I'll do is put some cement, some uh, super glue on here. And then I'm going to try and get this to stay in place. And we'll put some extra thin on this end. We'll see if we can get that to go into there. And stay in there. go itchy nose then I had to scratch my nose right so that's all gone together lovely so that's cool so that can just sit there now so I'm going to put another drop of extra thin on there and let it capillary in not extra thin the um, super glue and let that capillary in and fill that gap up so that is all in place on the wing so we can just leave that to dry and hopefully that will all be good so there you can see we've got our metal landing gear in there so if you've if you've got the J before you know in a, in a couple of months time if you've got the J that's how to use those metal undercarriage legs. And we've also got this diagonal that's going to go in. Um, and that is going to go in between the leg there. So I'm going to fit that after. Uh, because otherwise, I wonder if I can get it in now. It's going to go into there. typical it won't pick up the right way will it of course it won't it would make life too easy wouldn't it so that's going to go up into there there's tiny little pins on here and there's tiny little pot marks in the leg and that's going to go into there and it fits perfectly look 
at that. Beautiful. And there we are. I'm going to put another drop of cement on there just to get a good weld in there. And there we go. That is, um, it does need to be held together because it just keeps wanting to come apart. So I'm going to put that piece of tape on there. And then I can pull all that together then. And there we are. Job done. Very, very nice indeed. And we know that's going to be strong because you could probably have that leg without any of the rest on there. So there we are. That's, uh, it's obviously not finished. We've got other bits to go on. Just because we've got this, this piece here, which looks like some sort of pulley, N12. And then we've got another race piece there. I can't see where that is. just seems to be going into nowhere. It just seems to be sitting in the middle of nowhere. Maybe that goes on the door or something. Not very clear any instructions at all there. So I'm not sure about where that's going to go. And then we've got this piece there, N21, which is going to go between that cutout there and that cutout on the top. So uh, there we are. Right. Let's. I might do the other one as well now. Just let those uh, sit and dry. We'll have a couple of assemblies. It's a couple of sub assemblies. I'll see you in a so minute. There we go. There's our assemblies now all done. Um, as I say, I've used the wing as a jig to make sure it's all straight. So I would recommend you do the same. So and you can see we've got all the little bits and pieces on there. There's a little rod that comes off. Uh, what have I done with it? Here it is. There's these two parts here. These are parts one and two. Um, and as you can see in the instructions, they just glue onto the end of that arm there and just end up nowhere. I must check my references and see where they go because you can see here they're just they're just sitting in the middle of nowhere and when you turn over the page you can see there it is just just sitting there doing nothing. I don't know what it's going to be for. Um, it's probably some, something to do with um, closing the undercarriage doors or something I don't know but uh, we shall see. Um, there is a mistake here I don't know if it's the same on the other side Doopy doopy do. Yep, they've done the same on that one as well. So basically, you have this part here, which is N15, which is. Let's just get this off. It's this part here. It's actually a bungee cord, and I can only assume it's there so that when they when it unlocks, it pulls and makes sure the undercarriage folds up the right way, and it stops that arm sort of folding that way. It makes it fold that way, um, or it's to pull that one that way. Whatever. Um, so basically, it's it, it's this like what looks like a, a a fan belt pulley on a car engine, and you can see on this end, on the forward end, that it's glued in here. Okay, the little bits of super glue are actually filler, so um, you can see that is actually glued into there. All right, but if we look at the instructions. This always wants to fall over. If we look at the instructions, they've got it going. You can see here we've got N15 and there's an arrow that brings it around and it's pointing to there on the outside of this member. Well, that is actually where this part N21 goes, you can see there. So um, be careful of that. What they're telling you to do is put the end of that into a slot there when it actually goes into a slot there. Okay, there's a slot underneath there. All right, so that's, uh, that's simple enough. Um, but as I say, these, these drops of super glue, once they're dry, we'll go in and sand them out. I've also noticed afterwards there is a mark on them here. It's like an ejector pin, so we'll get, have to get rid of that. So, um, so there we go. So that is our undercarriage. And very strong it is too. I would thoroughly recommend it. It's very nice indeed. We've got all the oleo scissors on there as well. So uh, make sure you get them the right way around. So there we go. Right. Um, so that's the undercarriage done. So now I've got to decide, am I going to do the exhaust or am I going to do these undercarriage bays? Uh, I think I might do the undercarriage bays. Only reason being is having these hanging around um, as a sub-assembly is more likely to get damaged. And I've got the engines here in my little uh, curry sauce pots. There's the engines there. They're, they're fine in there. They're not going to get damaged. Um, but if I start to add the exhaust and stuff, you might start to move stuff around. So I think what I'll do is do these next, but uh, I may well change my mind. I'm actually, in reality, I'm going to put this down now 
and probably go out for a beer or something. Um, so when you see me doing something else, it will be like that, but it might even be two days for me. So uh, see you in a second. Okay, so we've got the undercarriage done. Here it is now in its little takeaway pot. Cleaned up those areas where I've put the black glue. And then what we'll do is when we've got some grey primer out, we'll give them a light coat of grey primer and do some seam checking. Just to check all the seam, make sure all the seam lines are gone from here, particularly on the metal leg. But uh, not a lot of it is visible, to be honest, because um, once it goes in, I can show you. Uh, here we go. Um, that was the right one. Uh, that's going to go in like that. Into there. And if you remember on this kit, we have to actually assemble the main undercarriage onto the model before you fit the nacelles. So then that's going to go over like that. And as you can see, you can't really see much of that undercarriage in there unless you sort of really look for it. But, um, you know, it's nice to have it like that. So, you, 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 you know, I enjoy the work, um, even though it's not sort of glaringly obvious, you know, you can't see, you're not going to see that forward bulkhead very much. So I'm not going to bother adding tubes or anything to that. But this area in here is very visible. So um, the Edward set in here is going to be very valuable. We're going to see all those little those plunged holes and brackets and everything. It's going to look amazing compared to the plastic. And um, what I'm going to try and do, and I've got the JK kit here as well now, so I have that to compare to. But what I'd like to do here is do a um, a, uh, a comparison so you can see one with and one without. So I'm going to try and concentrate on one side at a time. So basically the instructions asks you to add all this detail inside and glue them together. That's it, job done. If you start looking at the Edward set, which is here, then it's basically one sheet. Um, it's quite a large sheet. You see my hand on there. It's, it's quite a large sheet of photo etch. But you can see here we've got to remove all these, these horizontal ribs, um, clean up these vertical ribs. There's a tube there we're going to remove and replace that with a, with a piece of pipe. Um, again, Edward have made a, a mistake here. Be very, very careful with these instructions. Whoever drew these up, um, I think they'd been out the night before or something. <laughs> um, but basically, um, you know, it's, it's a small company. They're going to make mistakes, aren't they? The, the massive companies make mistakes. So what can we expect? But basically, you see here, it's got three and four, which is going on there. And this pipe that you're going to remove is going to here. OK, which is parts five and six that have holes in. Well, they've kind of left that out and they've, they've sort of missed this part out and drawn it in as that one. It's kind of a bit misleading. So be, be a little bit careful. It's You're just actually replacing that pipe. So basically the pipe you replace is going to go into that gap on there on part five. So uh, so there we go. Um, so we can actually drill into there and fit that uh, piece of um piece of pipe they're asking for 0.8 that sounds a little small uh, let's have a look and see which one is this this is this one um, let's see what kind of size it is where's my calipers uh, oh it is 0.7 so yeah 0.8 is going to be perfect okay so that's the um so that's the piece of tubing there you can see it's a uh, it's because of moulding restrictions, it's sort of moulded as a, like a flange. So we're going to get rid of that. We're also going to get rid of these ejector pin marks in here. Um, so what it's telling us to do is remove certain parts. So we can come along with a pen and we can make a mark on there, on there, on here. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to get rid of that, that and that. Okay, so that's that's that one taken care of. I'm going to work on one side at a time. So as I say, we can see, you can see if you think it's worth going to all this extra trouble and the um, the, the slight extra cost of um, of doing all this. And we're also going to remove all of this here. We're going to remove this, this, that in there. Okay, so they're telling us to remove that pipe work. I'm kind of wondering why. We'll have a look at that. Um, I mean, you're never going to see it anyway, but there's moulded in pipe work in there. You can see between those two upper shelves. So they're asking us to remove that. I mean, you're not going to see it, but I don't know why. 
it's looking like they kind of got it wrong. It looks like Hong Kong models got it wrong. So um, we'll have to look at that when we actually come to do it. So as I say, be, be very careful. Don't just go in and start hacking plastic away um, until you actually know. Because I have seen it where, you know, Edmar will tell you to sand an instrument panel flat and then later on they show you a part of the instrument panel that you cut off going back on. Um, so that's that one. So happy with that. So we're going to get this cleaned up, get those ejector pin marks sanded out and then we'll come back and see how it looks. Well, that's that done. You can see the difference now. Here we go before and after. And then here again before and after. The slight shiny appearance is where I've gone over it with Tamiya Extra Thin um, and that is just to remove any little sort of scratchy bits or furry bits or whatever and you can see we've also gone in and removed the ejector pins. Now if any of this needs cleaning up, as I say, that you, you're not going to see a lot of this here anyway because we're going to be adding in these shelves. So straight away the only way you can look in is in through the wheel bay through here, sorry through here so if you've got a shelf kind of you know sitting across there like that obviously you're not going to see much of this side wall above it so I'm not going to make too much fuss about having it perfectly but I've left some of the rib on there so that we can um, some of the shelf sorry so it sort of acts as like a kind of rib but uh, we'll see when we've done one how, how much we can actually see in there so it'd be interesting to see the other thing to do is in here this here is a pipe and that is obviously molded as a like a shelf because of the molding restrictions. So what we can do here is come in with a pointed knife and just scratch away some plastic at the base and then the wash will go into there and that will make it look that you can see already you get a slight shadowing um, and it kind of makes the pipe look like a pipe rather than a shelf. Okay so that's another little tip for you to do on anything like that. Um, okay, so next thing I need to do is have a look at these, where these vertical members are going to go. We've got holes in them. And in reality, they would just be one slice of aluminium with a folded edge, just like they are in the Bombay. But what we're going to do here, we're going to get a couple off and we're going to um, drill holes in the plastic so that they look hollow. So the first one we've got here is number one. So we'll get number one off the fret, which is obviously going to be near the beginning. So number one. OK, so it looks like we've got. Right, OK, so the number one's on both sides. OK, so we're going to take this one off. They are exactly the same, aren't they? Yeah. So uh, number one will actually be number two on the other side, I should imagine. I think I need a new blade in my knife. Oh, there's one there as well. I think I need a new pair of glasses as well. Eh? So we'll cut that off of there. Okay, I'm not going to worry about numbering these because they're all so obviously different. You can't get them wrong. It's not like the Bombay where they were all very, very similar. I'm not going to bother cleaning up any nibs. We don't want that one at the moment. We want this one. So this is number one. So number one's going to go there. And as you can see, it locates on those ribs. Now, straight away, it looks like it's being held off by something. Yes, it is. I've got a, I've got some of that shelf remaining there. So that was actually, okay, I want to leave a bit of that rib there. Not that you're going to see it, but uh, that was just holding that away. So I'm going to make sure as well that where we have removed shelves, we scrape plastic so it's nice and flush it's not going to hold the the rib away Shit, that's going to fit in there yep that's going to sit in there lovely okay so what I'm going to do now is just with a pencil if I can with a pencil I just want to mark where these holes are going to be Overhaul it from the other side. Okay, so now when I take this away, I can see on there, I can see on there where the holes are going to be. So what I can do now is come in with a little, as I just like I did with the um, 
I could use my little tool here and I could come in and just take away um, material, just make rough holes in it. It doesn't need to be particularly neat and tidy. As long as we don't actually touch this outer edge, because that's what we're going to see, then we can um, then we can go on and get those holes in there. So I'll get a tool, suitable tool, and I'll be back. Okay, so I've got my little um, Galax Pro here. This is what I've got on Amazon. Great little tool, really handy. Charge it up on your PC with a USB. So I've got a dental burr in here. And what I'm going to do is just try and control the tool without it wandering around too much and just make holes in here I think I might actually be better off because this ha this I almost call it Hasegawa then this, H, this uh, Hong Kong model's plastic is fairly hard so what I'm going to do is find something with a bit more of a point on it I think um, so that will sort of drill through it rather than trying because the, the biggest problem is when it skates off just runs off over the surface let me find something else hang on okay so I found a tool with a much sharper point on it so it's more like a drill also up in the speed slightly and it goes through now with ease so get in there and just find the center of that pencil mark just go through and then wobble it around a bit just like so and if you're going to ask me where do I get dental burrs from uh, I used to work for a dental burr manufacturer and if a dental burr was made with a slight imperfection on the front or a slight amount of corrosion or a grinding mark on the shank or whatever, it was immediately scrapped. It was never reworked or anything. So, you know, if you, these are scrap, so they've gone in the scrap bin and I've just, just taken them from there. Um, and I've only got a couple, but they are really, really handy. Um, obviously not suitable for using on a patient's mouth, but um, more than suitable for drilling out A20 wheelbase. So uh, there we go. So that's where I got them from. So uh, no, I can't get you any. And uh, no, I don't know where you can buy them from. But um, we'll just go in there now and just open these holes out. And there we go. And then all we've got to do is run over this side with a knife just to remove any immediate edges. We're not trying to get things perfectly cleaned up initially. We're just trying to get a, a rough idea of where we are. You can see that one of the problems with using these tools is that you can actually melt the plastic and get a, um, a bit of a funny finish. So we could just test that in there now. And uh, we can see that we're pretty much there. You can see we, we can see through. What I'm going to do now go out, is clean up the back as well because the back is giving me a, a false impression. Okay, so you can see we've got some, still got some furry bits in there, which are a pain. We can try this on there again now. So you can see that when we look, look at the wheel bay, we will actually have holes in our. You can see my finger behind there. We actually have holes rather than um, rather than just blank, you know, straight panels of plastic. So I am going to go in and open these up a little bit more. Um, Perhaps coming from the other way if I can. I must be careful not to go too far in because you, obviously you'll mess up the the wall of the of the, of the um, wheelbase because you can't because it's, it's on an angle. There we are. So we've got some nice big holes in there now. So uh, we shouldn't have any issues at all with any plastic being seen through the holes. Now obviously 
you want to get this right because this is extremely visible when you look in the wheel bay and if you go into all the extra work of doing all this you're going to want to show people that look at your model you're going to want to show them all the extra work and you want it to look right so there we go so once again we can just test fit this piece of brass in there and we can see how that looks and there we are you can see now we've got holes all the way through you can see my finger making a shadow behind there we are. So we've got to carry on now and do the rest on all the other ribs and then we're good to go. See you in a minute. Just a quick note guys, um, they're telling you to use, you know, on the other side that's number one, but it's actually going to be that one uh, because obviously we have, here we have number one and oh come here and number one, this one is the same as that one. Okay, so obviously, when you <laughs> listen to Jess below the table, when you come to use it on this one, here we are over here, then obviously this number one on this one is the back, and on this one it's going to be on the front. So it's actually not strictly correct. It's not number one here. It's That's number one and that's number one. So, I mean, it's pretty obvious to you, but uh, don't just in case you're going to get confused by it. So we're not going to worry about number two because we can see through there. And what you can do is if you want, if you want to just check, um, you can put this one on backwards just to check that we don't have any plastic visible through those holes. So there we are. So that's basically the same as fitting it to the, to the other side. I'm going to get this to line up better because somehow I've got it out of position. We can clearly see there. In fact, we can actually see some plastic at the top there. So I'm glad I did that now. Um, that was uh, that wasn't supposed to happen, but I'm glad it did. Okay, so I'm just going to come in and remove some more from there. I mean, it's a good idea to really remove as much as you can from all of them um, because. The last thing you want to see in there is uh, is bits of plastic. I mean, I, I'm going to paint these all black before I do anything of that anyway. And anything you do see will be black. Um, and also, if the bomb is anything to go by, there may be situations where they've actually got a hole in one side and not in the other. So you end up seeing a hole through one side. Now on here, you can see here that this number two Number two is a mirror of number one. So if I turn this one over, those holes should all line up. And as you can see, they do. But I remember in the Bombay, there were a couple of situations, or at least one, where like they had holes in this one and not in that one. So when you actually put it on, you had a blank. So um, just be wary of that. So uh, there we are. I'm going to do some more clean out on those holes, and then I'm going to get the rest of them done. And okay, so that's what our cutting down all holes done, you can see. Doesn't need to be neat and tidy, it just needs to be holes. So there we go. So the next thing we're going to do is these panels along the bottom here. Um, so this one's going to go into this side. All right, and I want to fit these before we fit the photo etch. And then the photo etch can butt against them at the bottom just to make sure we don't get any big gaps or anything. Um, <clears throat> fits in there so well, you have to tap it out. Tap it and wrap it, eh? So, um, there we go. Right. So now I want to drill these holes out. Just like I did with the Bombay, you can see here along this edge, I've got all these holes drilled out so it just looks more accurate. Um, so all I'm going to do is come along with a pointed tool, like so, and visually make a mark in the centre, which I think is the centre. Being careful not to push all the way through into your finger. Okay, so just do, I'll just do three. All right, so that's those three done there. And then we can come along with a drill, any old drill, which we use 0.75 or whatever that is. And just uh, stick that in our, 
in our drill um, because we don't want to go using power tools with drills. I don't like. I like to use. Uh, I like to do it all by hand. So we can pick up on those pot marks now that we made by hand and just drill through like that. Just like so. I didn't actually mark this one, did I? So we'll have to just go in without a centre pot. There we go. So we drilled those and we can look now and we can see if we're off centre at all. Now I can see that this one here is way off. So what I'm going to do is drill a hole next to it. In fact, what I'm going to do is come along with my pointed knife and move that hole over to get it central. Okay, kind of glad I did that anyway because that way I can show you how to do this. So I'm just using the knife just to open that hole out and get it so it's central. Okay, you can see it's still off to the right as you're looking at it. So we'll just keep scraping away until we've made a hole. There we go. As you can see, that's pretty much central. Now, just push the piece of plastic in from behind. Go away. There we go. So we can see we've got a hole now, which is pretty much center. So now we can come along with a larger drill um, so we'll go straight to a, say a one mil drill I think this one's actually quite blunt I think I need to get some new drills to be quite fair to be honest so yeah this drill is very blunt Mr. Unprepared as usual let's get a 1.2 And then what we can do is come in here and drill that out. Drill this one out. Drill that one out. There we go. And then I can grab a, a two mil. You can see now that we've got that hole, you can see it's just off. It's just off to the right. Okay, and is this one less than two millimeters? We'll take the drill out, which is always easier said than done with these bloody horrible collet things. Yes, it is. So we'll drill this one out. Okay, so that's that. Right, and then what we can do is come along here. I've got a three mil. This is a three mil bulldozed burr We're coming from behind. And what I'm doing here on this one, because it's the smallest one, I can use a three mil. And just keep going until I can feel the end of the cutter on my finger. So it won't cut, but I can feel it. And that way you can see that what we've got now is a Now that one there, the hole is off, so I'm going to just go in an angle like that, push it over. You can see we've gone through. And what we're doing is taking away the plastic from behind, but not actually going all the way through. So with that one, I can come in from behind with my knife and literally cut away the plastic. Just like so, and I think the three mil is actually slightly too small for that one because it's probably a three millimeter hole. So there we go. So you can see now we've got that hole leveled out. Now we've got a nice thin plastic wall. Do the same on this one. Going from behind. And what we're trying to do, as you can see on here, we we can still see the ledge around the hole you can still see an edge and if we just keep going until that edge disappears we'll end up with a nice crisp hole <laughs> okay 
There we are, I'm going to go a bit more on that one. In fact, on this one, I'm going to come in with a bigger one. So this is actually, I think this is a five mil. Now you can see why I've only done three holes because it's, uh, it's quite a challenge. Okay, we've got to be careful about removing this edge here because we end up with a gap. Same on this one. It's just basically thinning out the plastic so that you end up with some lovely looking holes. Now on this one I'm going to have to come in with a knife because if I go any more with that ball in there I'm going to end up taking a chunk out of this upper surface here. So do they look coming from the front? And that's all we're trying to do is put a chamfer on the back so that what we can see is a nice thin wall. There we go. Still got some plastic burrs on that one. Still there, go away. Still there, it will not go. Go away. There we are. So now you can see how much better that looks. But when you actually put it in your wheel bay, you'll have all this painted in green behind it. When you actually look up through the hole now, you've got the you've got the thin metal there rather than the big thick chunky plastic. Okay, so I'll do that on the rest of them and then we'll come back and see how it looks. So we're back. So moving on. Um, done all those holes and I've also made up those little photo etch brackets there as you can see um, and I've basically put them in place and a puddle of the black uh, extra thin super glue on them and that will get all around them and sort of encapsulate them if you like so they should be nice and strong I've also drilled them out on the on the, on the actual fret they're just um, dotted and then you the hinges are supposed to glue in place but I want to be able to put some rods through there because the doors there's no way they're going to stay on there without anything in there so you can see here where the hinges go in uh, on these ends but there's no um there's no holes there for anything so uh i'm gonna to have to do there's holes in them there are actually holes as well so they'll be good but on these um there's actually no holes so what i've done i've drilled them out you can see them here i've drilled them out on the fret um i actually drilled these out after i take them off and it was quite fiddly to hold them into easier so I've drilled them out on the thread on a piece of wood and then near here what I'm going to do with these I think is actually um, fold them in half and solder them together I think uh, on the fret and then drill them on the fret so um should be able to get a nice straight line going across there then as well but I don't think it's going to be that critical because there's, there's quite a lot of play and everything in them but um, you can see in the Edward instructions here where we we fit them here okay they're showing them as holes but they're actually not holes. Maybe they're supposed to be holes, but they're just not, not gone right through. Um, so, uh, and then when we actually come to fit the doors, you can see we cut all the, the plastic hinges and everything off. Um, and then we make up these metal hinges and they, they're going to hang off the doors. So, um, quite interesting actually, they've given us, I was looking at this and thinking they hadn't given us enough, but they've, They've actually given us 20, <clears throat> 24 of these brackets. We've got 24 of those brackets, you only actually need 12. So I, I was thinking it wouldn't get any spares because I was thinking we'd have to use the brackets on the doors as well, but it would appear we don't. So, um, yeah, 34 for three pieces there, so that's six. Three other side, so that's 12. Cool, so we'll have a load of spares, which will come in handy for stuff right so um the other thing i've done you can see here i've got a piece of plastic card reason being when i fitted this one is this one yeah when i fitted this into here um what i was seeing was a gap when you actually look up through the wheel bay there was a big air gap here so what i've done is just put that piece of five pound plastic card just to fill up the gap and when you actually look up in the wheel bay you're not going to be able to see it once all this is gone in i'm going to blend it all in with mr servicer anyway and then remove the cotton bud because we've got some gaps going on there and 
gaps going on there we'll have to clamp all this up and glue it but I want to get all this glued in place before we start putting photo etch so before we do that we're gonna to have to spray inside here and inside there on both sides we have to spray in there but with black so um that's what we're gonna to have to do first so I'll get that done and then I'll come back get these glued in I'm not sure how we're doing time wise but um we're gonna to have to think about wrapping this up soon because um, I don't want to make the videos more than like an hour if I can help it. So I'll, uh, I'll see you in a sec. So our black is done and as you can see I've also gone round the, the holes that I drilled earlier so that when we put the photo etch in we don't see any bright sort of grey plastic. We're going to have to get in there at all angles with some black primer um, because I want to um, make sure again you don't look through there and see bright brass in the background. Um, what I might actually do is paint the back of these black before I glue them on, but the trouble is it may, it just may affect the adhesion. So um, I, I remember I didn't remove any nibs from them, did I? So let's get these glued in. So let's get this one done first. Um, so that's gone there. I've actually gone round these hinge brackets and gone through with a 0.4 drill to clear any super glue out of them. So they're clear. Uh, so I'm going to get these glued in now. So what I want to do... I would normally clamp first and glue after, but what I'm worried about here is getting glue on the peg and it will capillary under and ruin all that lovely rivet detail we've got on there. There's a recess in there for it to sit into. So I think what I'll do is get some extra thin in there in the end. And just peg it. Kind of hold it in place. It's the trouble. My love of black primer caused me so many issues because often you can't see anything. So get some in the end there as well. And what I'm going to I'm trying to do here is actually fix it into place. Be careful of those clamps as well. Those um, hinges. Sorry. What I'm trying to do is fix it into place and then once that glue is dry we can glue the rest of it without any risk. I can glue it now without any risk here. Get it glued to that piece of plastic card as well. And then as I say what we'll do is we'll blend it all out with some Mr. Surfacer. But, um, you can see straight away it just looks great with those holes, those lightning holes along the edge. And then we'll have all these in here as well. It's going to look, this undercarriage bay is going to be the nicest undercarriage we have ever done, probably. Although saying that, the Border Models Lancaster one is, uh, is pretty nice. And for those of you that are wondering, I am working with a guy, as I've said so many times, and we're sort of backwards and forwards to get it right. And we're... Uh, Working around this, um, the raised rivets on the Border Models Lancaster. So uh, that's what I'm doing in the background. It will be back soon and it will be finished very soon. Okay, so clamp that in there. Clamp that one in there. Then we get some cement around here. Get it all nice and solidly glued in. We don't want it all cracking and splitting after, do we? There we go. Once that, once those that's dry, the pegs are off. We'll go around the bottom on both of them. So I'm gonna let them dry, and um, and I'll see what when that's done. So I'm starting working on the photo etch part. So we can take these clamps off. I'm going to grab some extra thin. I'm going to run it around the base of here. A nice solid joint. There we go. There we are. So now we can clamp that back in place again. 
we haven't run the risk of having any glue capillarying underneath the clamps and ruining the um, ruining the finish. So here we could do the same. Get some into there. I'm putting plenty of glue on, guys, because there's paint there. Obviously, I want to um, I want to dissolve the paint at the same time as gluing the parts. go right so I'll just do a couple of photo etch parts and then I'll do the rest off camera um, and we'll get a couple of these glue on I think we'll call it a day for this video because I think it's gone on long enough so we've got this here so um, I'll fit these here because they're the big ones so we've got I've basically roughed up the backs of them so that they're the glue will key on them um, and then on here what I'm going to do is get my sanding stick and just, just wipe over there to make sure there's no lumps. I'll do this one at the same time. Make sure there's no lumps of paint or plastic or anything on there because we have been doing a lot of sanding and cutting. Not worried about the front edge because the front edge, as you will know if you watch from Bombay, I'll either fill it up or sand it back so that it's nice and level with the um, with the fronts of the, with the PE. So that's going to fit in there like so. As you can see, that fits in there beautifully going over all those ridges. As we can see on here, I don't know if you can see, but the plastic is sli very slightly proud. So that's going to be good. We can we can sand that back. So I've got some I've got all sorts of super glue on here. I've got the thick black, I've got the, the fur PE, and I've got the black here. So I'm going to put some black in here. Some up there, and we'll put a couple of dabs around. I just want to make sure it doesn't spring off or anything in future. And I want to make sure that the front edge is glued solidly so that when we sand it back, we've got a nice seam. So, and this is the beauty of this black thin glue, it spreads easily and also it doesn't dry straight away, which is dead handy. So, that's going to go on like that. Okay, just nudge that over. So that's gone in. As we can see, we can see the brass through. That's what I want about the when you look at it that side, you can see the bright brass. So that's why when we when we come to paint it, we may well um in fact what I'll probably do is do one side, paint it, and paint the back of the brass and then go like that. Um there we are, so that's that one on. So I can just take one of these bulldog clamps and stick that on there, and that'll hold that in place while that dries. And then back here, um, did I already wipe this one over? I think I did, didn't I? Back here, we've got this one here, which is number one. So that one's going to fit into there like so just check it's going to go in yes it does it fits beautifully you can see there it's fitting in there lovely so we just take that out stick it on the edge of the mat so we can pick it up easily and then we'll put some super glue right in there Just like so. Let's grab another bulldog clamp. Just stick that on there. And we'll just leave those to dry. I'm just going to do one side and then get in there and paint the. Uh, the black in there behind so i'm going to call that a day for this one i think this has been part 23 and then what i'll do i'll come back part 24 and i'll have this all done all this photo etch done all these brackets and everything here so i'll have all that done and then what i can do is show you i won't do this side we'll do this side together because all this looks quite complex i'll just do this side and then um and then I'll, we'll, we'll do that side together in part 24 and then we can compare 
the virgin plastic to the photo etch. Um, but uh, I think you'll agree, or even, even you know, if I take these off now, even already, you can see, you know, the this is all very nice, don't get me wrong, but you can see how much better it's looking with all the holes and everything in there. It's looking really nice. So, um, I will see you as I say for part 24. I don't know how long it's going to be. Um, so I've got quite a bit of work to do here on this. I've got, I've got, I'm actually working on too many things at the moment, to be honest. But uh, I need to get them all done. So, right. I will see you all for part 24. Thank you for watching. And um, as I say, we will come back and I will do all this. And then we will come back and we'll do this here together around these vents. Because we've also got... Let's get this photo out of the way. We've also got this kit PE to go in as well. So we'll see how well that fits. For those of you that are building out of the box, I think you'll be interested in seeing that. So uh, see you soon for that one. Thank you for watching. Oh, and one other thing I want to show you quickly. I know that a couple of people said they'd be really interested to see. This area here is finally done. I've gone in there with um, with black super glue and it's all blended out. So you can see how much I've had to fill. And if you look closely, you can see around those lights, there's like a shiny area, obviously, where it's radiused in. So once I've put the clear parts in and I've got them sealed and everything, and I know they're sealed, what I'll do is I'll go around there with something, Mr. Surfacer or something, and, and fill in around the um, around the lenses so we get a nice smooth joint. I've been, as we've been going, I've been running my old Tamiya scriber along here on these seam lines and across here and across here and on these lines here, just up to that panel line there, just to make sure we keep the lines in place. So. Uh, there we go, but that's that's come out lovely. So um, here we are. I love that cockpit. Looks great. Looks really good. With all those extras and everything in it. So right, I will see you for part twenty-four. As I keep saying, thank you for watching. Bye for now.